Jorge, I'm glad you're here for this because I know this is something that, that, that you work with. With the uh, first documented case, I believe, and right. correct me if I'm wrong, where the medication regimen that's supposed to protect against HIV infection appears to have failed. In this case, it was a Canadian gay man who took uh, PrEP for two years but still contracted a rare strain of HIV that was resistant to multiple drugs. Obviously, this is something that a lot of people are taking. Um, does this quote unquote failure, does that change no. anything at all? No, 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 not at all. Actually, um, I was actually in Boston for the International AIDS Conference when this news came out. Let me explain what this is. PrEP is a technique. It isn't a pill. It, it happens that you're taking one pill. It stands for pre-exposure prophylaxis. That means what? You're taking something before you're exposed to it. So for people that are at high risk of contracting HIV, if they take one pill a day, they're 97% less likely to catch HIV if they engage in like the most unsafe sexual habit. So a lot of people are on PrEP, and what it's done, it has decreased tremendously the number of new infection and the number of people who are becoming HIV positive. All these studies are showing that it's 97% effective. Not 100%, so, right? So this wasn't, a, this wasn't a surprise. This wasn't a surprise. Exactly. Happen. So this person caught a strain of HIV from someone, and that strain was already resistant to this medication. That's all. It's to, it's to be expected. Now, now, out of curiosity, one of the uh, negatives when PrEP came out was people said, well, now no one's going to practice safe sex. And wear a condom. Is that, a, is that something that you've noticed? Abs is that a concern? Yeah, absolutely. All the studies that were done were recommending safe sex. And even in those studies, they knew that that wasn't happening because people were coming down with STDs. I mean, the CDC a few months ago just came out saying, you know, we have an epidemic of syphilis and we have an epidemic of gonorrhea. So hep C. He hepatitis C. HPV. All of these, all of the alphabet things. <laughs> <laughs> Resistant strain, I, I, just to go back a second, that scares me a little bit about this one case. Did that guy trace back who he had slept with that may have been the person that's carrying the resistant strain? Because no. that guy needs to be teased yes. out. Yes. Now, he, here's what probably happened. This person, had they really, the one with, that had the resistant strain, had they really been on medication, they should have had no active virus in their blood at all. Okay. All right, so they should not have even been able to infect anybody. So obviously this guy had sex with another person that was a lot more reckless, right? But okay. back to your point, we are assuming that this is the only thing that's out there, right? And you're getting protected against HIV. Look at all the different viruses that are coming up throughout the world. Right, so just because the fact that you're acting reckless, and I'm all pro-prep, pro don't get me wrong, I really believe it Because it's an additional layer of protection. Absolutely. For one particular virus, not all the STDs all. that are out there, and I think, you know, I think that may be the most important takeaway here. It's that, okay, it's kind of a gentle reminder yeah. that 97% perfect, 97 effective is not 100% effective. Absolutely. So people who are on PrEP should continue to have safe sex, use safe sex practices, yes. not only to protect against the potential 3% failure rate, but also these other sexually yeah. transmitted But in monogamous infections. relationships, like what I'm thinking, if it's a couple's monogamous, one is infected, one is not, and they're with that same couple, would that be a situation? That would be a great situation for PrEP. Okay. All right, because you lower your risk. Listen, what I tell my patients, <laughs> sex is like driving on a freeway. Bear with me, all right? Yeah, it's coming. Where's this going? <laughs> <laughs> you want to get to Santa Monica, and you choose to go on the freeway, and the freeway has certain risks, right? Mm -hmm. So in order to alleviate your risk, you choose to, you know, drive the speed limit. That's one layer of safety. You choose to put on your seatbelt. That's another layer. You don't text. That's another layer. The same thing with sex. You practice safe sex. Maybe you take prep. Maybe you're in a monogamous. You know, so they're all different layer of protections. Nothing's 100%. Now, I think that's a really good analogy, and I think the takeaway from all this is safe sex is safer sex. So why safer not practice? Sex. I don't think he gets it, but I get it. No, I know. <laughs> More to come. Stick around.